Victoria. I'm Pamela. And I'm Kate. And today we're dishing with you from Romberos, which is located at 3345 14th Street Northwest in Columbia Heights. And our guest today is Kim Cameron. I think you actually go by Kimberly, don't you? Kimberly Cameron? We can today. We can today. <laughs> Kimberly, <laughs> Kim Cameron, sorry about that. Kim is a singer-songwriter and she's the lead singer of the local band Side Effects Band. Kim, what kind of music is it that Side Effects Band plays? What do you write and sing? We generally are in the pop rock sort of genre. However, we do have a jazz song and we do have, I would put a couple of country songs mm -hmm. and then a couple of dance songs. So a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yeah, when I went onto your website, it looked like the genre was kind of a mix and, and mesh and mold of something slash something slash something. And I listened to a lot of your music and it's very inspirational, it has a lot of energy, but you're able to kind of switch between all of those genres. Do you feel that, I mean, that the mixture of all these genres is kind of what a lot of um, artists are doing these days now, besides just sticking to one? There's a few artists who will claim they're doing it. I, I think there are a few that are attempting to do it. I looked at it this way. I, um, we, yeah, we're in the iPod generation, yep. so true. people want to pick and choose. And they don't want a full album that sounds the mm -hmm. same, otherwise they won't buy the full album because they don't have to. So. And I get bored with music. I think everybody gets bored with the same kind of music. Right. So depending on if it's the morning, you kind of want something a little softer, or maybe you're going someplace and you want something a little more Or you're more sitting hip. at your desk and you exactly. want to be in, get right. some, a boost of energy. So I didn't <laughs> want an album that was going to be not representative of what I would listen to straight through. So I didn't want anyone to get bored in the middle and say, okay, I've, I've heard the top three songs I want and I want to go to the next one. So That's great. I did you know, design the first album like that in mind. The second one follows the same sort of pattern. Mm -hmm. And I haven't released the second album, but it's sort of waiting there in the wings. So speaking of album orders, I may be crazy and tell me if I am, but I think the second song on the album must always be the artist's favorite because it's always the best song. So do you order it that way? Is the second song the best song? <laughs> well, <laughs> ordering songs on an album is typically a, um, Heated conversation you uh, have oh, between a little insight your into this world. Producer <laughs> and you know the artist, and then of course the band gets input too, but they always lose. Uh, you typically get talked into it because your producer says, "Now these, you know, from an objective uh, right. standpoint, these are the top ones." And it's usually your first song is the song that they feel is the hit of the album. Right. So that's really? the first one. Yes. Doesn't necessarily represent what the artist feels, but it typically is what the producer feels. So on your last album, your favorite song, where did you put it? Well, all of them were her favorite. <laughs> all of them were her favorite. <laughs> it, is, it is a tough one for me because they all are stories about people I know. So they, depending on the day, it's hard for me to really pick and choose. And there are some days that I really prefer one over the other. The one that has the most, I would say, emotional connection to me mm -hmm. is probably the second song, so you were correct. Oh, um, thank you. But, you know, it, it, it does depend on my mood. So tell us your story. You, you went from the corporate world, which I think many of us have, and then you transferred into entertainment and, and being a vocal artist and songwriter. How does that happen? Because I would like to and do how did that, you make it but work? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Well, you know, making it work is always an ongoing challenge. It's very similar to working in the real world, except now you own your own destiny, right? So you don't have, you are your boss, you mm -hmm. are making decisions, right. and uh, that probably came more true for me when I became a label in August, so that was... Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit of a different, you know, nobody, you can't ask somebody to go and do something, you have to go do it, right? Or you and you hire the right people to help you do those things as well. But uh, transitioning, so the transition was easier in that sense because I don't think without that background, I could have understood how to manage a label as quickly as I have been able to do. Because mm -hmm. there are all these pieces and obviously there's a financial component as well that, right. that became more natural to me as I went through the process. Uh, but getting out of working uh, out of the desk with a computer for somebody else was really nice. But right. now that we've come into the digital age, I'm sorry to you're, say you're, you're that your computer is right there. <laughs> doesn't really leave. So, you know. Well, how do you have your inspiration for your songs? I hear you, you told me that you're, you pull them from your friends or you pull them from people that you meet. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us one story that just really touched you that you made a song out of? 
Uh, that would be the second song on mm -hmm. the current released album. It's called My Hero. And that song, actually, I took a ride back from Seattle. And I can't remember why I was coming back from Seattle, but there, you know, it was one of those long flights, so it's like six hours back to D.C. And the plane was dark. I don't think we got in until midnight. And I, you know, the plane was fairly empty, but there was a retired, not a retired, um, a serviceman who had just said, actually a captain who had just left his second door of duty from Iraq and wow. he was going out to job hunt. I think he was going out for a job interview. So we were talking and he had about, you know, six hours and he told me all about his time in Iraq. And he sort of started from the beginning and to the end. It was an amazing story. And it was an amazing story for a lot of reasons. One was because he actually was um, suffering quite a bit from, from what I would call self-worth. Right. He had done all of these wonderful things for the Iraqi people, providing them protection, helping them train, mm -hmm. getting shot at every day, because he was mm -hmm. right out there. He wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, sitting in the green zones or anything like that. He was, he was there with his guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually ended up at Walter Reed mid um, the first tour. Mm -hmm. So he had actually seen guys that had gotten hurt from IEDs and went through a lot of you know, emotional trauma right. as well. Right. And he left, when he came back for the second tour, he said, you know, it's as if what I did for the first two years didn't matter because I went back for two and a half more and nothing had changed. Wow. So he was, he actually um, decided to leave the army mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. And I was so moved, but here's this guy who had devoted his life right. for us, right? They don't right. get paid a lot, right. they leave their family, all right. of those things. And he didn't feel like he contributed very much at all. Right. So after about two months of really not being able to let go of the story, I wrote his story down. Oh my gosh. And, and, and this was the, music, the song. Yeah, and the, and this, that was the song. And then, so, the, and then the music just kind of followed. Music followed the song. Music always, for me, the music um, comes after you write the story. And then when, uh, then <laughs> the story I thought it was, was kind of over mm -hmm. a month ago, I was performing in Arlington, and it was after a performance, and I was sitting at the bar having a drink. That's to be great. Right. I get my drink because after the right, performance, right. I have a glass of wine in my hand, and this this gentleman comes up to me and he puts his hands out to shake my hand, and he says, uh, "That was a great performance. I really enjoyed it." And I sat there, I stared at him for a little bit, and I said, "Do I know you? You look really familiar to me." And he said, well, I'm not sure you remember, but we met on a plane about a year and a half oh ago. Oh, my God. And he so was the man that you had written the song about. He was the soldier. About. Well, it turns out he had no idea there was a song written about him, uh, that the song has been on the radio. And you, and you sent it to him. You sent him an art. You so sent he him was, the CD immediately. Wow. Well, he, he was there, like, so he was able to... Okay. He was able to get it that night, but that's well, great. You know, well, see, that's what happens when you when you live in the D.C. area. You meet these fabulous people like that. You're coming back, so you're from California. You went to Baltimore, and now you're here. And tell us your favorite thing about D.C. Georgetown. 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 We like Georgetown too. We love Georgetown. We love Georgetown. <laughs> Shopping, fun, history. It's all great. Everything's there. You can walk to everything. Absolutely. And can you tell us about your next performance? So whether we're in Georgetown or not, where can we come to see you? Come see us at Hard Rock Cafe. We perform June 18. Okay, and, good. And uh, all the guys that have active military badges actually get in for free. Oh, excellent. Well, we're That's definitely looking forward to that. We're looking forward to hearing all of the rest of the things that come out of this beautiful and wonderful brain of yours <laughs> because we are all inspired and we appreciate your inspiration. Absolutely. Thank you, Kim. And thank you for joining us on this episode of The District Dish.